I rise to present ACR 92, which recognized the 50th anniversary of the Watts Revolt, which originally took place on August 11, 1965. This historic event was concentrated in the greater Watts neighborhood, where I was born and raised in Los Angeles, and in the surrounding communities, and involved six days of protests that resulted, unfortunately, in 34 deaths, 1,032 injured, and over $40 million in property damage. <clears throat> but it must be noted that the Watts Revolt was one of many uprisings during that time. That year before, in 1964, a total of eight separate incidents of social unrest took place across the nation in cities that included Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Jersey cities, in addition to further, further protests across major cities in 1966 and 1967. So in framing our discussion around the Watts Revolt, we have to understand that it was a symptom of a chronic problem of injustice and discrimination that plagued our entire nation. Let me clarify and be clear. We are not celebrating riots nor are we advocating violence on any, on any level. This resolution seeks to rewrite the narrative on civil unrest by addressing the foundation of injustice that led to the revolt and also uh, celebrate the peaceful triumph that came as a response. Given the magnitude of the Watts revolt and the impact it has had on our state and nation, I ask that you support me in carrying out this conversation forward that moves towards a reality that we can proudly pass on to our children. In closing, this discussion is important to emphasize the purpose of this resolution. It is to reframe the discussion around the Watts revolt. This revolt did not take place in a vacuum but occurred as a result of a generation of oppression and brutality. Our humanity cannot be beautiful and powerful in its existence. We must also understand that we are incredibly fragile. And as a people, we cannot take place. We can only take place when an environment of people have been oppressed and depressed to the point of breaking. A quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, permission to read. Without objection. Dr. King stated, I would be the first to say that I am still committed to militant, powerful, massive nonviolence as a most potential weapon, but it would be morally irresponsible of me to do that without the same, condemning the intolerable conditions that exist in our society today." Unquote. So it is not enough to say that we oppose riots or civil unrest. You must also oppose the foundation that's caused by the civil unrest. And when we take a look at South Los Angeles today, we see a reminder of powerful and energetic people that are resilient as a result of what transpired 50 years ago. A community that reshaped itself and the conversation a community that now bears the name of a hospital that's serving low-income residents called Martin Luther King Hospital. A Cal State University Dominguez Hills that rose out of the ashes 50 years ago. A Charles R. Drew Medical Science University that came out of the ashes 50 years ago in 1965. As well as a powerful organization that was created to redirect the conversation. The Summer Watts Festival that's celebrated each and every year. The Watts Parade that is also celebrated each and every year. The Watts Labor Community, better known as WOCAC, that has also come out of the ashes 50 years ago. 
And so I ask you to stand with me in organizing this historic injustice that plague our society, to support in celebrating those who have dedicated their lives in making progress in my community. Mr. Speaker, members, we're not celebrating a riot. We can put different phrases on different words all we want. I represent this community. This community has rose up out of the ashes. We look and reflect on our past so we won't repeat it in the future. And that's what this resolution seeks to do. And so I appreciate the conversation in this House, and I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you. Thank you.